Hello everyone, welcome to your 31st C++ Qt game tutorial. So let's just go ahead and quickly pick up from uh, where we left off in the last tutorial. Basically we've uh, made it so that the texts are initially invisible, and by text I mean all of these texts, the texts that describe the attack values of each side. But we also gave the hex class a member function that allows us to make them all visible, and we call that member function display all attack sides or something like that doesn't matter so we have that capability that's the important thing so now what we want to do is whenever we create a new hex we want to uh, basically make or uh, let me rephrase that whenever we want to create a new card remember that a card is just a hex that has not been placed yet it's in the one of the two players decks so now whenever we create a new card we want to set the attack values of each of its sides to a random so basically the players are going to get cards that have random attack values so we'll just go ahead and go inside the game class. Remember, we have a member function called create new card. And right in here, basically before, uh, basically let's see how this member function works. We create a new hex. We make it so that it's not placed. Therefore, technically it's a card because we're creating a new card. And then we add it to the proper players list. But before we add it to the list, let's just uh, give each of its sides a random value. Whenever you want to use random values in your C++ program, you need two libraries. So you need to include stdlib.h. This will give you a function, two functions that you'll use, srand and uh, also uh, rand. And I'll talk about those shortly. Then you also want to include time.h. This will give you a member function called time. Okay. So let me just... So basically the plan is we're just going to traverse through each of the uh, sides. So we have six sides. So we need to, well, let's comment this first. We're going to say randomize side attacks of card. So we're going to create a loop here. Because we have six sides. Okay. And for each side, first of all, we're going to generate a random number. So uh, the way to do that is basically you need to initialize a variable. We'll call it random. And we're going to set it equal to the return value of this rand function. Now, this rand function returns a random number that is extremely large. So you basically want to uh, make this smaller within a certain range. So the way that we're going to accomplish that is by taking the remainder. So we're going to divide this large number by... Uh, uh, we're going to divide it by 7, so we're going to divide it by 6, right? And that will give us a, a value, the remainder is uh, going to be 0 through 5. So no matter how large this number is, if we divide it by 6, we're going to get a remainder between 0 and 5. But what we want is an attack value that is random between the range of 1 and 6. So we're just going to add 1 to any value that we get. And this will successfully generate a random number that is in the range of 1 to 6, which is what we want. So now that we have our random number, we simply want to set the attack of that card to that random number. So we have a member function called uh, set attack of, and we're going to take that ith side, so side 0, side 1, etc., and we're going to set the attack to this random number. Now the last thing that we have left is we need to modify this attack of uh, set attack of member function. What's going on? Our loop is not working. It's for size ti equals zero of oh, n equals six. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and go inside this set attack of. I don't know why it's not working. Oh, have I not defined it yet? Oh, I, I may have not. Okay, so let's go inside the hex class and let's see if we have set attack of. Yeah, I do have set attack of. All right, make sure I spelled it right here. Yeah. Anyways, I think it's a little bug with my IDE. So we're gonna go ahead and inside this. Uh, we're gonna define this set attack of. So basically, what we want to do in this member function is we want to first of all find out which side it is that we're changing and what we want to change it to. 
And then we want to change that actual integer attack value. But in addition to that, we also want to change the uh, visual representation of that attack value. So there's two things that we need to change, the attack value and the text that represents that attack value. Now we can uh, do a bunch of if else statements to see uh, like if this is side zero, then change side zero. If it's side one, change side one. If it's side two, change side two. But anytime when you have a bunch of if else statements, it's just easier to use a switch statement. So we're gonna switch based on the value of side So if the value of side is 0, so if we're trying to change side 0, then naturally what we want to do is we want to set side 0 attack, which is a, an integer that represents the attack value of the 0th side. We want to set it to whatever value was passed into this function. Now we're going to do, um, in addition to this, we have to change the text. So uh, we're going to take the 0th, so attack text, we're going to take... Um, the zero with attack text, and we want to set the plain text of it to be basically um, the num the attack that we're changing it to. Now remember again, the queue string class has a static member function called number, which takes an integer and returns a string, because that the plain text attribute of a text item has to be a string. So this is how you convert a number into a string. You use the static member function called number located inside the queue string class. Um, you're going to do a similar thing. So if it's not, if it's side one, you're going to do a similar thing, but you're just going to change side one instead of side uh, zero. So this is also another repetitive thing. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this and finish it for you guys. You don't need to watch this. Okay, so now I've completed the set attack of member function to actually change the actual attack and to change the text that represents the attack. So let's go ahead and do build clean all build run q make and let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so it's time to see. And we don't have anything so far. Well, everything works, but remember that we made the attacks invisible. So let's go ahead and make them visible. Remember that we have a member function that will traverse through all of the text items and make them visible. So whenever we create a new card, we basically want to, after we create the card and then we uh, randomize the side attack, we want to make it visible. So we will basically make side attacks visible. And we will do hex, or uh, rather, we call it card. So we're going to display side attacks. I believe that's what it's called. Let's see if this works. And there we go. It works, but we have a few errors. We have not set the position of some of our uh, things correctly. So let's go ahead and see what could be wrong with that. OK, here's the problem. I didn't change the position of anything except side 0 and side 1. So I have to do side 2, side 3, side 4, and side 5. Now let's run it. And there it is. We have generated random side attacks. We've generated text to represent those side attacks. And we've also uh, created random cards, essentially, by doing that. So the players get random cards. And now you can place the cards. And the plan is that when you place a card, I want to compare two adjacent touching sides, and the greater one will conquer the lesser one. And we're going to do that in the next tutorial. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.